Here's what you can expect when you run the code in this LabVIEW project. To begin, you'll want an audio source from either your PC or your phone, and then you want to send that to either speakers or your earbuds. If you're using earbuds, please protect your hearing and start with low volume. I've opened RT main and you might notice a broken run arrow. Let's go ahead and click it and find out what the problem is. It says that the FPGA v VI must be recompiled. It's not a problem. Let's find the FPGA target and then the FPGA build spec. Right click on that and choose rebuild. Choose the appropriate option for rebuilding the bit file. And after a number of minutes have elapsed, about five to six minutes later probably, you will see that the compilation has completed. At this point, you can go ahead and run the VI. All right, down here we will see a strip chart recorder of the processed audio signal. I'm using this tool to generate various test tones from my PC. Let's go ahead and hit play. Looks like we see a little bit of activity. Make sure that the volume is turned all the way up on the PC. Let's try dialing in a different frequency of 500 Hertz. Or even 2000 Hertz, that looks pretty good. Crank the volume all the way up on the application here. Notice that you can try out some of the different wave shapes and observe their corresponding patterns. We'll go with sine wave for now. Here we have some basic RT processing that we can do. This is just applying a gain to both of the stereo channels. Here you can do some experiments with the amount of processing time on the RT target. You have indicators that tell you the maximum loop time to keep up with the FPGA, and then you have the actual loop time. What I'm doing now is artificially increasing the minimum loop time, and as soon as I get beyond 10 milliseconds in this case, we see everything kind of falls apart. We have overflows on the various buffers, and we simply can't keep up. You start to also hear quite a bit of audio artifacts as well. So that top panel there is giving you some indicator about how the FIFOs are doing in terms of whether or not they're full or how much uh, uh, data they have remaining. Let's go ahead and get, it, get back to the beginning or initial values. You can also try experiments with the rate at which the FPGA is acquiring audio. You can adjust the sampling rate in kilosamples per second. You can get pretty high here at 500 kilosamples per second on the FPGA side. Let's take it all the way back to 50 again. You can also experiment with the number of audio samples per frame. For example, if we have less audio samples, we have a higher frame rate. We can make the frame excessively large and eventually that's not going to work, at least with the default settings. Let's try experimenting with some values here. Let's take this back to 1,000. All right, that seems to work. Let's try pushing this up to a little bit bigger number of 2,000. Okay, that didn't work. Well, let's look at the block diagram. And in fact, the particular, particularly useful number here is the value 1024. And this is where you're defining the size of the FIFO buffers themselves.